morning and welcome to Oak Forest United Methodist Church. We are glad that you are here to worship with us this morning. A few announcements is that we have our fall VBS. It is here. It's hard to believe that October is here already. And so that'll be today after church from 1 to 3, and that's going to be a great time. Uh, for those that are volunteering, we really appreciate your help. And so after, after this worship service, we'll have lunch down in the fellowship hall, and so we hope that you'll come and join us for that. And then this Thursday, we have the food pantry from 11 to 1. And so if you'd like to volunteer or if you know people that might need that service, let them know. Um, we also have a few other announcements in our bulletin where it has some trunk or treat information for you and some other about the food pantry Thanksgiving needs. So go ahead. And then also this last week, the newsletter was sent out. Uh, you maybe saw this in there is that we'll be starting this this month. You'll be moved. I know it's going to be a fun game. So soon you might see this on your doorstep with a black little treat and then you pass it on and you leave yours up so that way people know that your house has been moved already. So we are looking forward to seeing that happening during this time of October. And also we're just ready, I think, unless there's any announcements that other people have. Okay, then I think we are ready to turn our hearts and prepare for worship. So stand as you're invited, um, to stand as you're able for the call to worship. Good morning. Our sovereign God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. What are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? We have children seeking your kingdom. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. We have our children ready to be your hands and feet in the world. Our sovereign God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Please remain standing as you are able and sing. All people that on earth do dwell, found in your hymnal on page 75. <laughs> Take refuge in you. 
You alone are the source of all our good. We seek to be counted among the godly and upright, but we confess that we have run after others' powers, and we have brought trouble upon ourselves and others. O Lord, our portion and our cup, you sustain us and lead us in good and pleasant ways. We confess that we have trusted in false wisdom and set our hearts on short-sighted desires. And for that, we ask, forgive us, God. Help us to set our ways before you. Help us to be sustained in your righteousness. Let our hearts be glad and our spirits rejoice and our bodies rest in hope. For you do not abandon us to our sin or let your chosen ones dwell in the pit. In Christ, you show us the path of life. You welcome us into the joy of your presence and you feed us with pleasure forevermore. You allow us to come and in our hearts and give them to you. And Lord, we are thankful for that. So let us join together today as we pray the prayer that our Father taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The children are invited to come down for the children's message. Remember that we are all a part of your family. 
The scripture reading is John chapter 6, verses 51 through 57. Lord, hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. I am the bloody bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, allow these words not to be made mine, but truly made yours. Allow our hearts to come and praise and worship you, and allow us to hear and receive your good news today. Amen. So recently, I've been listening to a book on my library app called The Gunkel. In it, it's about this man named Patrick, and he's always loved his niece and nephew. And that really means that he's loved spending time with them whenever he goes to visit them, or they come to visit him for a short time. However, when tragedy strikes their family, and they lose their mother, he's now the guardian of them over the summer, as his brother deals with a health crisis of his own. And so he starts making up these rules, called Gokul rules, and he's like, I have no idea what to expect and how to help them grieve through all of this while I'm also grieving. And as they spin this story, you start to see how he's been stalled in his own life. And how after he lost the love of his life, how he'd stopped living. He'd become recluse and had spent his time kind of away from everybody. And so until his life was interrupted, he hadn't realized that. And so as he opens his eyes to this new responsibility, he begins to see that it's okay to fail as a human at times, and that it's better to live instead of just being stuck where you are. And I think that this is sometimes something that we need to remember. We want more, and we desire to have that life, and then we forget that. And so we become stalled, or we feel like we're stuck in the rut. But then we turn, and then we find the bread of life, and everything can change for us. Now, the fourth gospel is sometimes called the gospel of life. That is, John is all about life. It occurs 36 times in this gospel and 16 times throughout all of the gospels. But part of this is that John has eternal life is not only something that is given in the next life, rather it's something that we also experience here in this life. It says that when we distinguish natural life, which God gives when God breathes into the spirit, into the human being, and the spirit that Jesus breathes onto his disciples, and he walked up a room, then we can see the view of the coming of eternal life through the incarnation, namely the real life of Jesus. And that since then, those who trust in Jesus have already passed from death in this life because of that relationship. So in today's lesson, as we read about the bread of life, we know this message is a deeper rooted part for us. That it's not the actual literal bread and breaking of the bread, but it's also about satisfying the hunger of the soul. 
And aren't our souls hungry? When we live in a life that is filled with God, we are truly able to live. We aren't called to go through the motions. Our faith is not a bunch of check boxes and to-do lists. Read my Bible this week, check. Pray, check. Post a religious meme on social media, check. Went to church, check. Those are all really great things to do, but that's not the basis of why we do them. It's not for others to be able to see and witness exactly how religious we are, but we want our actions to match in that. So everything that we do in life, whether it is those things with the other things that we do, in our life will also then allow them to see that we have some reward in our life, that we're living in a way that the bread of life is filled within us. So the reality is that what makes this text from the Gospel of John so incredibly relevant is that Jesus is the bread of life. That doesn't mean that Jesus is the magic remote or some sort of a form of insurance, that it never seems that we can have exactly the right thing happen when we want it, but it means that that bread of life satisfies the hungry of our souls, that hunger. If you've ever heard the hymn, you satisfy the hungry heart, some of the words are, you satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. The spirit of those lines is captured in a little parable about a holy man who rested beneath a tree at the outskirts of the city. One day, he's interrupted by a man who ran to him saying, the stone, the stone, please give me the stone. And he told him about how he had a dream of an angel that spoken about a man outside the city that would give him a stone and make him rich forever. So the holy man reached into his pocket and pulled out the large diamond he had. And he said, here, this is probably what the angel spoke of. I found it on my journey here. If you want it, you may have it. So the diamond ring, the diamond was as big as his fist, and it was perfect in every way. So the man marveled at its beauty. He clutched it eagerly, and he walked away from the holy man. But that night he could not sleep, and before dawn he woke the holy man, saying, The wealth, the wealth, give me the wealth that lets you so easily give away a diamond. Jesus is the bread of life. And in him we satisfy the hungry heart. So why do we come and worship? We come to be served, or are we here to be those that are serving? But honestly, when we come to the table, Jesus puts on the apron and is ready to serve us. God has already given us so many riches and blessings and wealth that we are able to receive and so easily give to others. Because our faith transforms our lives in a way that allows us to be filled. Yes, there are moments that we can only go through the motions, but it's the hope that then when we discover the bread of life that we can continue to become alive again. And when God's people do that, well, we begin to share life with others. Tony Campolo, he is a sociologist and also part of the Baptist tradition. He's pretty well known, and uh, one of the things he's known for is kind of spitting while he talks in his presentations, but also he has some powerful stories and so in the book, The Kingdom of God is a Party, he shares a story. He shared about how he was in Hawaii, and it was late one night, and he couldn't sleep because of the time difference. He was awake, and so he's like, I was hungry. And it was 3.30 in the morning, so he's like, I start going up and down the side streets trying to find something that is open. And he said it was one of those kind of greasy spoon places that he finally found that was open. He said, I was afraid to even touch the menu. I just knew it'd be gross and nasty. So he tells the guy behind the counter after he's asked, what do you want? And he said, I guess I'll just have a cup of coffee and a donut. And so he poured them a cup of coffee. He said, then the guy wiped his hands off his apron. And you're like, oh yeah, that's clean. That, that washed your hands. And the guy hands him a donut. So he's like, thanks for my dirty donut. This is great. And so he says he's sitting there munching on it, drinking his coffee, and it's 3.30 in the morning, and the door suddenly swings open. And he says to my discomfort, in marches a line of about eight or nine provo pro provocative and boisterous prostitutes. He said it was a small place, and they sat on either side of me, and their talk was loud and crude, 
He said, I felt so out of place and uncomfortable, but I didn't know what to do, so I stayed there trying just to be invisible. And suddenly, the woman next to me says to her friend, tomorrow's my birthday, I'm going to be 39. So her friend responded in a nasty tone, so what do you want me to do from that? A birthday party? What do you want? You want me to get you a cake and sing happy birthday? So the friend then replies, come on, she said, why do you have to be so mean? I was just telling you I wasn't expecting anything. I don't want anything from you. I've never had a birthday party in my life. So why should I expect that now? When he heard that, he said he made a decision and knew what he had to do. And so after they left, he asked the person behind the counter, do they come in here every night? And he's like, oh yeah, they do. And he said, do you know the woman that was sitting right next to me? And he goes, oh yeah, that's Agnes. She comes in every night. Why do you want to know? So he told her about the birthday. And he said, I have an idea. I want to decorate this place and throw her a party. So he calls for his wife that's behind in the kitchen and tells her, hey, he wants to throw a party for Agnes tomorrow. And she's very excited about this and says, I know you probably don't know by looking at her from her job, but she's a really caring woman. She deserves this. She's really a great person in our community. And so he said the next day he came back at 2.30 in the morning to decorate the diner and make it look nice. And the diner owner had said, okay, we'll make a cake. Don't worry about that. So they decorated and had everything ready. And they said that um, it was all set up. And he said it must have been the word on the street because soon the whole place was filled wall to wall with the ladies and me. And he said, so right at 3.30 on the dot, the door opens and in comes Agnes and her friend. And so as I'm kind of throwing this party, I became the MC and said, happy birthday. And everybody else starts shouting happy birthday. He said he'd never seen anybody so flabbergasted. And so stunned, so shaken, her knees started to buckle a little bit, and a friend grabbed a hold of them to help her. And so they all started saying happy birthday as the cake was let out of the diner kitchen, and the owner, Harry, says, blow out the candle, Agnes, come on, blow out the candle, so I'm going to have to do it for you. And she's just sitting there crying and crying, and so finally she said, is it okay if I wait a little bit to have the cake? Um, and so after a while, she said, well, actually, can I take it down a few doors? We live right by here, and I want to show my mom. And so they're like, wait, it's your cake. So she stood up to take the cake and went on her way to show them. But she said, I'll be back, I promise. So Tony says, here we are, standing there awkwardly. I didn't know what else to do. So I said, well, how do you say we pray? So here he is, leading this room full of prayer, telling them and praying that, he really prayed for her life and that she could have a good one and that God would be able to be there and help her change. And he said when he finished, Harry leaned over the counter and said, hey, you never told me you're a preacher. You said you're a sociologist. What kind of church do you belong to? And he said it was just one of those moments where he's like, well, I belong to a church that throws birthday parties at 3.30 in the morning. And he said, no, you don't. You can't. There's not a church like that. If there was, I want to be part of it. And what if we all? Because we want to join a church that knows how to be the bread of life for others. We know that Jesus came into the world to create a church, to create a church that was filled with people who can move out into the world to see those people that are hurting and bring joy and celebration to their lives, to show them a way of having hope having a way of having faith. And so the, those that are brokenhearted and beaten down, that is what they need right now. And we are called to be those agents of God's change in the world, to spread his love and his joy, to continue to share the bread of life with all that we need. And so when we sit and break the bread with one another, we experience God present at the table. And when you share the bread of life, we become filled but it also does for the dining companion. They become filled as, way, as well. And may you look for all the ways in which that you can be filled with the Spirit and experience the life of Christ this week. Amen. It is World Communion Sunday, 
and it's a joy and an honor to be able to serve and unite together as we become united as the family of Christ. And so the Lord be with you. I think we might have to do this again. I know it's been a while, but I know you guys know these responses. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. You are true to who you are and reveal to us the glories of your presence. You are a God of love who speaks against oppression and injustice. You are a God of grace who also asks us to forgive those who are blind to the privilege, even as you invite the world to learn from you. You are the creator God who weaves the beauty of diversity into something fresh and new, the garment of understanding and wonder. You call us to follow you out into the unfamiliar and to leave the comfortable, but to live by faith. Calling upon your holy name and trusting in the power of your grace, you invite us to be like Jonah and preach your word to Nineveh. Bringing salvation to our historical oppressors, you move our hearts to say with Ruth, wherever you live, that is where I will live now. You will be my family, your God will be mine. I will even die for you, very next to you. Because you show your mercy to every nation and people upon the earth. Because you speak with every language and delight in every culture. We join in your praise with all the earth because you have embraced people from every continent, have walked with all of our ancestors, continuing to hear your praise even in forgotten languages that are sung, and continuously sung in endless praise. I'm going to test you all now. Here we go. We join together as we remember and say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are they who come in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, and Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus also shared with all that came to the table. He entered into those deep theological discussions. He broke a lot of cultural taboos and stereotypes. And Jesus responded to the needs of those who he met. From a culture dictated that the least important was to wash the feet, Jesus then broke that covenant, that social covenant, and left the seat of honor and took his robe with a towel and a basin in his hands, knelt and washed the feet of those who would later betray him. And Jesus invites us to do the same. As an expression of culture, Jesus took the bread and remembered the historical struggles of his people and shared it with everyone, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Likewise, he took the cup and remembered the historical struggles of his people and shared it with everyone, saying, Drink with me, all of you. This is my blood poured out as a witness to the covenant and forgiveness of sins for you and the whole world. And out of that time, Jesus was able to cross those boundaries and bring salvation to all. Jesus came not to save his own people, but all people. Jesus came not to save his own economic class, but those of every class. Jesus came not to save just everybody that looked normal and sane, part of the crowd. Jesus came to save all. And so we have testified this by the mystery of salvation found in Jesus Christ for all when we say, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Let us pray. Breaker of walls, wind of change, use these simple gifts of bread and wine to become for us the body and blood of Christ, source of your transforming power. Cross cultural dancer, wind of change, use these simple gifts of our lives, our culture, our faithfulness, and our dreams to come for you, the world, the church, the authentic body and devoted bride of Christ, source of your transforming power. Be with all of those who are called to cross the social boundaries of race and culture, to boldly go with your grace and send them. Give them the courage to accept your challenge to pick up the cross and follow you. 
Use your faith, their faithfulness to set the captives free, to restore sight to the blind, to liberate the oppressed, to share the news to all. Be blessed by the presence of Christ. Be blessed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Be blessed by the creativity of the divine inspiration. As we break bread and sit at this table, may we remember those gifts as we become the hand and feet of Christ. Amen. Lord, bless us and allow us to become your hands and feet as we go out into the world. Amen. And you are invited as you're able to stand for the last hymn. And I don't have my bulletin. Let us break bread together on page 618. And we'll be singing verses 1 through 3. Thank you. 